let's talk about the Albion. Um, there's a lot sort of going on. I mean, there's not a lot going on, but there yeah. is a lot going on yeah. when you look into it. Obviously, we've had internationals. We've had a bit of transfer rumours here and there. We're starting to transfers. Um, obviously, Basuma, Kukurea, as we've sort of touched on before, being linked with moves away. Um, but before we go into that, obviously, we've got an incoming, by the looks of it, in Julio Inquiso, who we went after in January. Oh, really? Um, I've done a little yeah. bit of research, but you guys, I mean, what do you guys think of this potential, looks like it will be signing, 18-year-old Paraguayan sensation, apparently, in Julio Inquiso. Ben, you go I've first, got, mate. Yeah, I've got high hopes. A lot of people are thinking that he we're going to sign him and then he's going to go on loads to the USG or something like that. It would be funny if he does do that because it just continues the meme, but <laughs> I really do think that he will be staying. Yeah. You know when we signed Alexis McAllister for like 8 million and the only reason why he had to get loaned out after that was because of his, um, was the international? He didn't permit. have enough, inter- yeah, the permit. His permit Whereas yeah. in- CISO mm-hmm. actually has the work permit because he's been playing for Paraguay. So we're, if we're spending nine and a half million, mm. it would be very odd for us to then not use him whatsoever and send him straight out on loan. That would be quite a, yeah. quite an investment just to not use him for the first season. Then we season. did it with Kozlovski, didn't we? The Casper well, Kozlovski, that, yeah, that was we like sent a, him straight out on loan. Yeah, was that for like, like a six months? Mil. That was like a six month loan though because we got him in Jan, didn't we? Yeah. But I do I do think, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm confident and maybe it's just because I want him to be in the first team next year, but I'm confident we'll see him in the squad next year. But I could be talking my ass, but no, yeah. What yeah. about you, Maz? Yeah, no, I, I, yeah, I'm, I'm excited. Um, I think, uh, just correct me if I'm wrong, is he, is he a wide, is he a winger? Wide player? A forward and winger, isn't it? Yeah, winger forward. slash striker, I believe. For, okay, yeah, I think he's, he can be a second striker as well. Okay, interesting. Yeah, I, th- I think that's definitely an area that we we definitely want to strengthen, um, especially with like you know the likes of Danny Welbeck not being too reliable in terms of fitness, um, and you know various like we, we've been shown that historically, well, in the last couple of seasons, that going forward we need we need reinforcements and we need a a player that can really. Just, just attack teams because I feel like that's what we've been missing. Is like mm. we don't have a player that really sort of runs runs at the defense. Um, you know, you could argue obviously no. we've got we've got some talented players. We've got you know we've got Trossard going forward, Mope on his day. You know, uh, good good quality. But yeah, I just feel like we're, we're missing that little spark. And hopefully, if he's as good as everyone makes out, and he's that wonder kid that you know people make out, then he can be a great addition. But my only thing is, yeah, he's eighteen. He's come from the is it the Paraguayan league as well. Um, someone, someone said it's Peruvian because yeah, I like thought it was Paraguay. oh Peruvian, but right. yeah, someone said it was Peruvian, but maybe yeah, they were yeah. lying as well. We should so, know, obviously. I'll quickly Google. Well, yeah, it's, it's Club Liber, Libertad, yeah. which is I don't know who they. Let's have a look. Club yeah, Libertad. Yeah, I, I've uh, heard that them. I've heard that oh, he's they are a, a very big prospect. I mean. The South Americans have sort of bigged him up as being, you know, the next sort of Luis Suarez-esque sort of player. And and the only one that was compared to that was Darwin Nunez, who obviously moved to Liverpool, all but moved to Liverpool anyway. Um, I mean, South American talent seems to be a thing at the minute. Everyone seems to be going there to build up players. I mean, we've obviously had McAllister come in recently. We've obviously had Caicedo as well come in and, and done really well. The, the South American stock seems to be getting higher, maybe because it's more accessible. Everyone loves South Chinese American ballers as well, though, don't they? It's now, Everyone loves the South American ballers. Yeah, and it was easier to... It's now easier to sign them from South America due to the Brexit thing. So that's why people are doing it. And obviously, in Kiso, I don't know too much about him. I did a little bit of a scout report on him. Um, and from what I've seen, he scores a lot of goals. And he's, I think he played 14 games uh, in the whatever it is league. Got 11, 11 goals in 14 Whatever games. Whatever league. Three or four assists as well. I don't know what it's called. Um, yeah, the Farmers League. But to oh, be honest, geez. I'm not really too worried about what league he's playing in. Because my my outlook on it is if you're good enough, then you're definitely going to be good enough to play for us. I mean, we've seen that with, like I say, they obviously went on loan to beer shot and didn't, you know, they're not a great side, but it's but, performed so well for us. The, the, yeah, the, go on, Maz, you want to say Yeah, something? no, my only sort of rebuttal to that would be so, yeah, with Caicedo, for example, he obviously didn't go straight into the, the, the Brighton squad. He went out on loan, got experience, whatever. And I feel like with, yeah. with with him as well, I think that's that's key. It's like, yeah, don't get me wrong, if you're good enough, I agree with that statement. Like, if you're good enough, you know, you're good enough. However, going from playing the like the Paraguayan league to playing in the Premier League is a complete different kettle of fish. So I, I just feel like in, in that oh, sense, God, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like, I, th- I think we need to... Either do what we did with Caicedo, loan him out and then bring him in halfway through the season and just sort of ease him in like we did with Caicedo or give him the full season, um, you know, somewhere 
uh, let him just get his XP up in a, in a, in a like uh, you know another sort of XP. half decent yeah uh, in another half decent league and then bring him back like he's what he's 18 years old so like yeah. he's still got yeah. but so if, many if that is the case it. if that is the case then nine and a half million is a hell of a lot of money just to buy someone and then put them out is elsewhere it, I don't, well, for I don't us, because we don't really, we haven't really been spending that money. Like again, we always say it, but we want to. That but nine it, and a half million is a lot of money, and you could get someone very decent for that money. I I, I disagree. In this climate, who are you going to get for ten million? Well, we're, what I'm saying is like we got under for what like six and a half. Like we could put that ten and nine and a half million to an actual first team striker. Maybe that you have another bit of budget, but instead of just spending nine and a half million and they're not buying a first team striker, for example. That's what but, but, I'm what, trying to get. But my but my argument. Mm. Well, my my sort of. Uh, thought process is well it, it, yeah in, in this day and age 10 million pounds won't buy you no I'm saying that'll go who... towards I'm going that towards someone so not not someone for 10 and a half million or 9 and a half million sorry oh towards the 20-30 mil transfer yeah right, yeah, right, yeah. Right. sorry that's what I meant I'm yeah with... right, right, that's right, like right, a right, third right, of right. Right. like a decent striker if you're um, looking at a 30 million striker yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm with you I'm yeah with you. I mean it's an interesting debate because I think as well to add to it is is Graham Potter's first signing that he's requested, apparently. Well, Darwin um, Nunes I don't know how true this. I think it? the only other signing I was about to say, yeah, oh, right, the only yeah. other signing that was supposed to be was Darwin Nunez. And, you know, obviously uh, we mentioned him just a minute ago, how he is joining Liverpool. I mean, that's only in the space of the last six months. And obviously Nunez was never going to come to us. Let's be honest. Yeah, he, yeah. he knew that he could play for a better club. He knew that he was a lot bigger than us. I think we people seem to get it wrong in the in the media and social media saying, you know, we didn't push hard enough, we didn't put enough money into him. I think we put as much money as we possibly could into him. It was just as simple as he he knew he could get to a Liverpool or Man City, you know, only six months later. So that's what fills me with a lot of confidence towards Inkiso. And I spoke to Andrea Orlandi, I think it was the summer of twenty twenty, uh, when we were first in with Nunez and I said to him you know, you're a scout in, in in Spain now. What do you rate of this Darwin Nunez? He was at Almeria at the time. And he said, great little player, but not sure if he could do the step up. He said, it'll be interesting to see how he does to another team before going to the Prem. And obviously that's when he went to Benfica and did very well. Now he's at Liverpool. And it, it sort of happened really quickly. That's only in the last two I, years. I, yeah. So I my point I can't is, believe it though. Nunez I, is... I, don't, I really don't see hmm. where the hype is for the, the amount that he's going for, like 85 million or whatever it is. Like, he hasn't exactly it's a like, lot of money. He hasn't exactly lit up the footballing world. Like, he hasn't scored unbelievable amounts of mm-hmm. goals at Benfica when he's been there. That's why even when we were going for him, he had even had like a really bad season at Benfica, which is why we went back in for him after yeah. he went from Almira to Benfica. He didn't score that many goals, but His we still believed him. second half of the season was great, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah. And then he obviously, yeah, he scored yeah. more goals in uh, Europe last year, which is probably where he got his name. But he hasn't exactly like lit uh, up like Haaland, for example. We but know, you know what how I look do. at it, Ben? And he's yeah, he's going for thirty. More, but then, 30 but then you look at it home. as how many times do our do our recruitment team hit? I mean, we we are very very successful in the transfer market, especially in recent times. I feel like whenever we track someone, they do end up doing very well in their careers, or or they do very well for us. I don't think it's a surprise that you know Man City, us, Arsenal, Liverpool have all been interested in Nunez for the last two years. I think it's it's obviously he's, he's obviously got something about him. Oh yeah, but Liverpool to, yeah. to go and spend that sort of money. He must be a great, great player because they don't spend that sort of money on players. So my point is, you know, Nunes is what, like 20, 21 years old? And Kiso is on the other side of that, 22. So he's on the other side of, he's actually a lot younger than than Nunes actually is as well. So he's got that growing time now. But if we get him now, he's going to be able to adapt to our leagues and even, you know, potentially be a superstar for us like Nunes has been. But um, it is an interesting one. 